Today is a John Swat's birthday. If you were still alive, he'd be 105 years old. He's the founder of this monastery. So every day we're in his debt as we practice. If we don't practice, we're really in his debt. He went way out of his way. He was in his 70s when we started this place. He already had some comfortable monasteries, but he wanted a place where, as he said, people from all languages and all nations could come and practice in an environment that was conducive to the practice. Up to that point, he'd stayed in places that were not all that conducive. They were comfortable, but not really good places to meditate. So he put up with the discomfort of coming out and staying in a little tiny, tiny trailer as the place got off the ground. So we're in his dad, and it's good to think of his teachings. One of the teachings that he stressed over and over again was restraint, particularly restraint of the mouth. He said, something comes into your mind, it's not a good idea to have it come right out your mouth. It shouldn't be checked beforehand. You think about what the consequences will be. His description of someone who's stupid was someone who has an idea and it comes right out his mouth. You've got to stop and think, is this worth saying? What would be the consequences? In other words, you use your discernment to think about the long term. In this way, you don't have to think about what you said afterwards. So exercise some restraint. If something comes out your mouth, then it's your karma by that point. If something comes into your mind, that's not karma yet. That's what you do with it. He made a lot of the point that the Buddha talks about how things are not self. Your body, feelings, perceptions, thought constructs, consciousness, these are all not self. But then we chant every day, I'm the owner of my actions. They are mine. Once you decide to do something, it does become your karma, it becomes yours. So be very careful about what you choose to take as yours or not yours. You have the choice. If you didn't have the choice, there'd be no point in even having a place like this. Everybody would just have to do what they had to do, what they were forced to do by past conditions or whatever. But we do have this freedom of choice, so make the most of it. We can choose to act, speak, think in skillful ways. And we can benefit a lot from it, and the people around us can benefit too. We can act, think, and speak in harmless ways. Ways that are conducive to peace, ways that are conducive to all kinds of good things. So we have this power within us, and the problem is we have the power in the other direction as well. We have to be very careful, we have to be heedful. So as you think about what you're going to say, give it a test. The Buddhist test was to ask if it was true. And then if it was true, then the next test was, is it beneficial? And then the next test, is this the right time? That's three checkpoints right there. It should help slow down any impulse to just speak whatever comes into your mind. And that way you can save yourself a lot of grief. So we think about the teachings of those that come before us, that we pass the teachings on to us. We want to pass the teachings on intact. We do that by practicing them. We see the value of the teachings because we see the results in our lives, and the people around us will begin to see the results too. As he once said, we're not here to get anyone else. We're here to get ourselves. But if other people see that this is a good practice, we're happy to welcome them. So here you are.